We are going to look at literature survey in the next uh, three modules, each comprising roughly about 20 minutes. The first 20 minutes is going to be uh, slides on uh, the background of literature survey and then the next 20 minutes roughly will be on uh, an, uh, actual demonstration of uh, the various uh, literature sources. I am going to show you how you can search for literature, organize them uh, in a set of tools that you can use and then in the last 20 minutes I will see how you can uh, use this literature data in a document that you want to write up. So, we will start off the literature survey by first making a disclaimer. Uh, literature survey is not just googling uh, for some information. The reason is uh, Google search engine um, is going to look at the private websites of various individuals whereas by literature survey what we basically mean is uh, a survey of technical literature that is of authoritative in nature uh, pertaining to the scientific enterprise that is going on across the world in universities, research labs and so on. So, what comes closest to uh, available, what is available in Google would be perhaps a Google scholar. So, please note that literature survey is not the same as googling out the information. So, we are going to look at the literature survey in this uh, manner. Uh, First a very brief background on why should we get into this uh, literature survey at all and then uh, where are the sources of literature that we could look up, uh, what are the ways by which we can go about searching and then uh, who are all the publishers uh, who host the scientific archival uh, literature that is being used by scientists all over the world and then towards the end how to collect and store it in a manner that we can use it to write up a document. Okay. So, why do we want to do a literature survey at all? So, essentially the first requirement that we need to do is every scientist cannot replicate the entire history of how a particular topic has evolved. So, we must use approaches that are going beyond what others have done till now, which means that we must know what others have used, what kind of approaches people have used, where are the gaps that uh, have uh, come up and uh, where is it that we can contribute. And then what is the difference that we are making to the existing knowledge? And very often uh, a very novel technique used in a very familiarized uh, area would be uh, a good addition to the literature and sometimes uh, a very uh, familiar technique used in a totally novel uh, area of research would also be valuable. So, novelty and familiarity as well as familiarity and novelty require you to know what is familiar and what is novel and therefore, literature survey is necessary for you to know that. And then uh, very often uh, a study is valuable or seen as valuable by our peers when we are able to place that study in a current context where people look at it as valuable. So, it is important to avoid duplication and it is also important to clarify certain controversial uh, results that may be coming up. And uh, if you want to know what is the state of the art in the literature that is currently there and we want to extend and build on the work of others, definitely we need to know what is done till now and literature survey should help us in getting that status quo of the subject we are uh, trying to do research on. So, literature survey that way is a very important aspect. It should be done not only at the beginning of the research, but also throughout, but at the beginning it definitely makes a very important point. Literature survey in the context of making a PhD thesis or a research uh, based uh, degree uh, is uh, important because uh, very often the research degrees are given uh, based upon original uh, work that is done by the student and uh, duplication is not acceptable uh, even if it is not uh, intentional. So, it is important to know what is out there, what have people done uh, elsewhere in the world on the research area that we are working on and uh, sometimes it is also important to uh, establish the context for your work and it is also important to have a background knowledge of uh, the topic that we are working on. Okay. And uh, to also point out anomalies and gaps, we must know what has been done till now. So, in the context of a research thesis also research uh, analysis and literature survey is very important. So, where do we look up this literature? So, very often uh, we have uh, various uh, ways uh, and I am going to look at them in one by one. The first way is obviously uh, what is available for everyone in the world, open access. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, cost of keeping a journal publication or a conference proceeding in an archival manner that is available uh, in a reproducible manner over a long period of time uh, is going to uh, 
make the respective uh, publishers uh, spend money for that. So, which means that there is a subscription cost associated with every uh, journal access and uh, therefore, op open access that is uh, publicly available information uh, from scientific archival data is very limited. But definitely they are uh, increasing in number as we go along. So, open access is uh, uh, very much available and we will see uh, what kind of a journals are available under open access. And in India, uh, there is a arrangement made by the Ministry of Human Resources Development under the so called INDEST program, uh, which is being coordinated by IIT Delhi, uh, which provides access to a large uh, number of uh, literature uh, sources uh, to various uh, educational institutes in the country. They are categorized into various groups, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, etcetera, and which means that if your uh, research organization or uh, university is funded by government, then most probably quite a few of literature survey uh, can be done using the sources that are paid for by INDEST program. We will see what are all available on INDEST for uh, our institute and then we also can uh, see what is available in other institutes where we could perhaps go visit, take permission and do the literature survey there. Uh, very often uh, the literature sources that are subscribed by INDEST are not adequate. So, some libraries do spend additional amount of money to make subscriptions beyond uh, that uh, set and uh, this is something that will be available from your library. So, you definitely must uh, get in touch with your uh, uh, librarian and find out what are all the uh, journals that are subscribed by your library. And uh, off late there has been also an effort to use uh, some of the uh, possibilities of authors being allowed to share their own publications on uh, a portal where uh, upon request it is possible to have the literature shared. So, these are called as peer sharing uh, sources. So, uh, researchgate and academia.edu are uh, such uh, peer sharing uh, sources which also may be able to provide some amount of literature. So, what are these literature sources that we are talking about? We are basically going to look at periodicals, research reports, conference proceedings, official publications, standards, thesis, dissertations, etcetera. Sometimes even publications that are going to come up in future can also act as a source of literature. We must of course, uh, have a pointer to refer to them, so that whenever their complete uh, bibliographic details are available, we will be able to update them in our document. And uh, there are also secondary sources of literature such as compilations of works done and uh, reviews, reference books, handbooks, etcetera, textbooks, monographs and abstracting services. All these can be also acting as literature services and uh, tertiary sources like dictionaries, yearbooks, bibliographics, lists of secondary sources also can be used as sources of literature. So, when we go ahead with literature survey, we must be familiar with some terminology. Uh, every book that we want to refer to must contain what is called an ISBN number, International Standard Book Number. This number is basically going to allow anybody in the world to identify uh, the book and also possibly source it uh, if it is available in print. Uh, any book that does not have an ISBN is essentially not traceable after some time and it is important to note it down whenever we want to refer a book. Similarly, any journal that we want to refer to should have an ISSN number and these are also applicable for newspapers and ISSN number is uh, going to be in ranges. We must pay attention to this when we are also uh, referring to conference uh, uh, proceedings which will usually have an ISSN number. And today in the digital world, we would like to have a, an identity for each document such that we will be able to access them directly and such an initiative is now. Uh, available and uh, the number is going by a name called digital object identifier, namely the DOI number. So, every uh, document that is available online uh, in the uh, literature, open literature will have a DOI number and uh, there is an agency which uh, translates the DOI number into a URL where that particular full text resource is available. And whenever the full text resource moves, uh, the mapping will be modified by the agency, uh, DOI agency and therefore, we will be able to access the resource as the resource keeps moving its actual location. And that means that if you are going to refer to an online resource, make sure that you have a DOI number for that particular resource, so that you can refer to it by that number. 
And of course, there are also other things that we must be familiar. Uh, there is something called UDC CLAT catalog. This is basically to physically be able to refer to that book uh, in a library. And uh, the format of a bibliographic information uh, comes in uh, several uh, methods and uh, two such formats are very popular, RIS format and BIP format. We will look into the format of uh, these two uh, types of specification and what kind of fields are available, etc. as we collect literature survey through the demonstration that I will do briefly uh, later on. Okay. And there are also some other things that we must be aware of while doing literature survey. One such thing is journal impact factor. What we mean by journal impact factor is that to see how many times the articles in a particular journal are being referred by other journals and other articles. It basically gives you a sense of how often these articles are being read and being used by other scientists. So, if you want to compare uh, two journals in a particular area, uh, then the one with a higher impact factor is being accessed, read and referred more often. And uh, this is uh, a number which is controversial, one cannot compare these impact factors across research areas. Very often it is seen that a, a research area in which the research is very actively being pursued, there is a large number of researchers that are working then uh, normally it, it uh, will have journal impact factors a little bit on the higher side. And in communities, research communities where the, uh, the number of journals are limited, the number of uh, scientists are limited, then the journal impact factor tends to be on the lower side. So, it is not an absolute uh, method by which we can say a journal is less or more important, but it gives you a relative sense uh, to compare two journals in a particular area of research. There is also something called citation index. This is about a journal article, uh, how many times has it been cited? Uh, we do call some articles as citation classics. What we mean by that is there is an article that has been referred by so many people, maybe hundreds, that uh, you could now call it as a classic. And the citation is basically how many times it has been referred by other successful journal publications. H index is something again a controversial index, it basically refers to uh, how many times a particular author's publications have been cited and uh, uh, how many of them exceed the number of publications. That is basically uh, when we say that an author has an H index of say n, then he has n papers that are cited n times or more. So, which also means that an author who has a higher H index uh, is a, an author whose papers are being read widely and are being referred widely and most probably he is a more successful uh, scientist. So, what are the various strategies to search literature? It is very important for a newbie in research to be very effective in uh, searching the uh, literature in his or her area uh, because the amount of time available uh, to come to the focus area is very limited and we must uh, identify the gaps very quickly so that we can focus on the research that we want to pursue. So, there are three major strategies that we can use to uh, search literature. The first uh, strategy is basically uh, using a keyword. What we mean by a keyword search is uh, using a, a word to identify but the topic of the res uh, research result that we are looking for or to use the author's name. Uh, we could also use a keyword that is mentioned by the article itself. So, essentially it is like coming up with words that would describe and identify a particular uh, research paper and which means that there are variants that may be available that point to the same article. We will see how we can do that shortly. Uh, there is also two other uh, ways of searching what is called the backward chronological search and a forward chronological search. What we mean by these two will be evident as we do the searching. Uh, when we go ahead with a domain demonstration. Citation is something that is going to be playing a role in the forward chronological search. And where do we do these kind of a searches? So, there are certain uh, databases that are available uh, which contain the entire uh, collection of uh, journals and con conference proceedings that will be uh, collected together and uh, one needs to have a subscription for these services to have access. Inspec and Compendex are uh, some such databases. Uh, PubMed is relevant for the medical community and we have of course, Math Sinet and Chemical Abstract Services. So, if our libraries have access to uh, these uh, databases, then we can have uh, 
an ability to search a large number of articles and conference proceedings in one place. The backward chronological search basically what it means is that we are going to look at an article and see what are all the papers that it is referring to which will be basically older than the article and then look at among those references what are relevant for that uh, topic and then uh, going recursively back in time. So, this way actually we can uh, go and uh, discover the entire background of a particular research area. Uh, forward chronological search is uh, something that works in a different manner. We basically first identify a very important paper in our area of research and then we will see what are all those uh, publications that are citing this particular paper, which means that they are going to come in the future in the sense let us say we have identified a very good paper in 1994, then all those papers that are published after 94 which are referring to this particular paper and among those there will be some which will be very relevant to us and then we are going to pick them and then we will see which of the papers after those have cited those particular papers and that way we can go forward in time. Obviously, we can come only up to the year that we are searching uh, because the paper that will be published in future are not yet available to us at this point. Maybe by the uh, volume uh, number wise, maybe one year ahead we may be able to see the papers that are coming in but not beyond. So, what are the kind of uh, uh, information sources that we can use where the citation information will be available. So, here again subscription is required and two such uh, uh, sources I am going to show you. One is the Thomson ISI uh, company's uh, web of science and the other is Scopus and uh, these two are uh, seen as the most popular sources of information for citation and I am going to show you a demonstration of how to look up the important research results in a particular area using these sources. Uh, a word about publishers, uh, roughly about uh, 80 percent of the publications uh, in the journal forms are uh, done by a very limited number of companies that I have listed here. LCVS and Springer together they take up majority of the uh, journal publications in the world and then comes uh, the Taylor and Francis group, uh, Nature Publications group and Manny Publishing. And then there are a large number of uh, journals that are published by societies, American Physical Society, American Institute of Physics, etc. So, there are uh, journals that are published by societies and there are also publishing houses. So, we must know where to find uh, the websites of online resources for these publishers so that we can search for our articles there. Online articles are also available uh, in a full text form. Uh, from portals that are run by the respective publishers. So, Science Direct is one such portal that is run by Elsevier, Springer Link is a portal run by the Springer uh, publishing uh, group and uh, we have uh, many such uh, online uh, uh, sources that I am listing here. We will open up some of those sites and then see how we can capture those um, full texts that are available against subscription. So, sometimes it is also possible that the articles that are being published uh, can come to our desk without our intervention. So, what we mean by that is uh, we do not have to go to the journal website every month to check what is new. Uh, there is something called RSS feed subscription or content subscription. So, we can enroll our email with those respective publishers and then they will actually update us if there are new articles or if there are new issues every month and that way we can see that the literature survey is being pushed to our inboxes rather than we going and searching. Naturally accessing the articles that come with links in our uh, emails through these subscriptions will require a subscription from our library. However, the basic information such as the title, authors and the article uh, details such as volume, issue number and page number etc. will be available uh, in our inbox uh, through these subscriptions. Sometimes it is also very uh, useful to uh, visit uh, special interest group websites. Uh, one example is imechanica.org uh, which is a, an interest uh, group for mechanical engineering uh, community. Uh, these groups or uh, these group websites will basically discuss about ongoing work in that particular domain. So, it is a very good idea to check out some such sites that may be active for your research area. So, when we want to then write up uh, we need to basically organize these uh, references in a numerical manner one after other in the sequence of referencing in the document or maybe chronological order or alphabetical order. So, we must be aware of what are the different styles 
in which the references are required for a particular document. Uh, this may be varying from university to university and also from a publisher to publisher when we want to send our manuscript for publication. So, it is very important for example, to use a reference manager to be able to change the style depending upon the source of information and uh, the target where we want to send our document. I will be introducing some of those reference managers. Uh, the, my favorite one is Jabref, which is a open source and freely available software. I will be actually doing a brief demonstration of this software. There are many paid ones also, which I have listed here. Uh, and uh, some of them may be subscribed by your library for uh, your university. Uh, you must check with your library uh, what are available for your university uh, as far as reference managers are concerned. There is also a very nice comparison of all the reference management softwares on Wikipedia. You may want to have a look at it before you decide which ones to use. And I would like to thank Professor K. Ramurthy and my colleagues uh, for helping me with some of the pointers for this uh, slide still now.